Good day, class. This is your semester 4X05 Clinical Skills course director, Dr. Dyer, welcoming you back to uh, a new semester, either in Knoxville or wherever you are in Knoxville or St. Kitts. Welcome back to those of us who are rejoining the semester and a warm welcome to those joining us uh, from semesters 3X and 04. We're happy to have you and congratulations on making it to a new semester. As I mentioned before, my name is Dr. Hedda Dyer. I'm your course director and I look forward to working with you throughout the next 15 weeks. Welcome also to the Department of uh, Clinical Medicine. We're happy to have you. As you can see, the semester runs from January to April 2018, and I do not yet have an office location. When I do, I will let the class know. And in the meantime, you can contact me via email. My email is listed below, hdyer at rossu.edu. That's hdyer at rossu.edu. So, you can see that clinical skills education in the undergraduate medical curriculum is fundamental to the development of basic clinical method and the lifelong achievement of excellence in clinical practice. And this is one of our main uh, objectives uh, in getting you through this semester that you will uh, leave with a repertoire of clinical skills that will be relevant and will serve you through your entire clinical practice and career. And here are our goals to further develop patient interviewing and physical examination skills. You've worked on some of those uh, in previous semesters and we're gonna take that further. Develop advanced interview skills and the ability to work with uh, difficult patients and by that we mean patients where uh, there are multiple factors going on in the interview and the patient encounter. Integrating and continuing to integrate your basic science into your clinical work and problem solving. Increasing your comfort within a hospital and clinic setting. And uh, by that we mean increasing that uh, comfort level and uh, your ease of interviewing and examining within that clinical setting. Using those skills as you also prepare for step two CS in the near future. And a new addition post Hurricane Maria, being able to adapt while remaining focused on your goals. And with that, we know that that's something that we can all attest to having survived Hurricane Maria and going through the last uh, semester in September to December. And so welcome, as I mentioned before, or welcome back to semester 4X05. And it's been said many times that uh, this experience has been one of resilience, uh, sense of community, challenges and triumphs, and that is no understatement. We also, as physicians and physicians in training, are called to adapt to dynamic situations while remaining focused. We know that healthcare is a dynamic uh, environment by its nature. And to this end, we will all need to be flexible during this semester while fulfilling our obligations. And so, be on the lookout for any updates and communications from, from me. And so I implore you to read your emails for any changes or updates. As always, all your course and uh, syllabi and any information that you need to access will be on eCollege. And you're also expected to complete the semester 4X05 orientation quiz by 11 p.m. local time. Now, if you notice, we will have two time zones, Knoxville, which is 
Eastern Standard Time and St. Kitts, which is Eastern Standard Time plus one hour. So be aware of this. Always check your emails. And as always, if you have any questions, concerns, or queries, drop me an email. My email address is below. I mentioned the quiz, the orientation quiz. Here are the uh, times and the window uh, when the quiz will be accessible. And so you can see the time here from midnight on Sunday, September 14 to 11.59 p.m. Sunday, September 21. You have a week to take this quiz. Scoring a minimum of 95% enables your CSO to contribute to your activities component of the course grade. A word about logging in again after the semester break. Note that your CAE login password has been reset, and here are the instructions as to how to go about uh, resetting your password. And if you run into any problems, you can have to contact Mr. Purnell Roberts. As always, make sure that you have your Ross ID badge and bring your required medical equipment and that you're dressed professionally. So let's move on to our course components. Uh, at the end, near the end of this presentation, I will show you a, a, a table where your CS course grade um, is broken down. But in the meantime, we're going through the individual components that make up your CS course. And the first one here is your Harvey curriculum. You can see that you are required to log two hours of self-study, and that's a minimum. All right, you're encouraged to study more as you, as you need to and to continue to practice. Uh, and you will have your Harvey Heart Zone exams on which you'll be tested from any of the following Harvey programs. So I encourage you to practice them all and to use the resources available to you for that. You can see that the exam will occur in week 13. April 10, April 11, April 12, you will get your individual date and time on your e-value schedule, and your dress code is professional, and this just briefly tells you about the exam. I will give you a greater detail nearer the time by sending out an email outlining what's expected during the exam. Your Advanced Interview Skills Training, AIST, builds on your skills acquired during your SIST. We continue building on that skill set, um, learning more techniques with challenging patient problems, emotionally charged interviews. And these, as you know, are heavily assessed in Step 2 CS, and so we're laying the foundation for you to practice your clinical skills. AIST program has returned to its original four components, and you can see here that they consist of the orientation and training session, the standardized patient practice encounter, the AIST technique and demonstration session, and of course your AIST practical examination. All of these are further outlined in eCollege, and you can read for greater detail. Short word on your AIST review sessions. We've noticed the benefit of the one-on-one uh, -on -one student to faculty review session, which is one hour in duration. And these are open to you. They need to be booked as you can see, from one week up to 24 hours in advance of the date that you choose, and you get an opportunity to review your SP encounter session with a medical colleague or clinical teaching fellows, and they will give you pointers on how you've performed from the physician's perspective. You know that you have your checklist which you'll receive from your patient, but that checklist will give you your performance from the perspective of the patient. So you need to get the perspective of the physician for a complete assessment of your performance, 
and the ICM lab remains the only location where this can occur and you will be able to book review sessions there. Your AIST techniques and demo session will be led by Dr. Robert G or Dr. Carrie Gasker within the Behavioral Science Department. And these are intended to cover any questions that you have after you've done your review or your um, SP video review with your CTL colleagues. The AIST exam, practical exam dates uh, here, uh, again, you will get an individual date and time. You know that it's a 17-minute encounter, which involves the interview, the focused physical exam, patient education, and an oral presentation. This contributes to 30% of your final CS course grade, but you need to score 70% or higher in order for this 30% contribution to occur. A lot of students have asked, what does this mean? As an example, if you score 100% in your exam, then you get 30% of that value. If you score 60%, then 0% is contributed because it's less than 70%. So whatever you score, as long as it is 70% or above, you take 30% of that amount, 30%. And this is what it is here on the slides. So with your simulation component, you have two simulation sessions. Again, all the information is on eCollege. Your dress code is professional wear if you don't have time to change, but ideally your blue scrubs. Be on time and please review any reading material. We move on to the epidemiology biostatistics component. This will be slightly different in that we will have the lab being replaced by lecture and we will have the normally three component offering replaced by a formative quiz on CAELS. Dr. Carrie Gasker is the contact uh, faculty in behavioral science who you can email her email is here for any questions or concerns regarding any of the reading material and um, if you need any additional support as i mentioned the epi biostats lab this semester replaced by a live lecture further details to follow and we spoke of the formative quiz on CAELS. Nearer the time, I will give you the dates and format. And note that it is mandatory. Therefore, it must be taken by all 4X05 students. And if you score 85% or more, that will contribute to 2.5% to your CS course grade. So, as you can see, your CS course grade is made up of multiple components, and I'll run through them here. Attendance at the AIST sessions, scores on the AIST practical exam, attendance at simulation sessions, completion of two hours of Harvey self-study, uh, the Harvey Heart Sounds exam, a score on the epibiostats, and although I, there's no slide here at the moment, the service learning pro project has, if you haven't yet completed and submitted it in semester 4X05, more details to follow. I will follow up with an email outlining the nature of the service learning project. So don't worry about that. I will send that out. And finally, a score of 95% or greater for the CS orientation quiz. There is no remediation for the CS course, uh, as you know, and I am going to show you what it looks like visually. Okay, so your advanced interview skills training and the components. 
the Harvey self-study simulation, your CSO quiz, these are going to contribute to your activities grade. Your Harvey Hard Sound exams, your AISTA exams contribute to your CS grade and your EpiBioStat quiz will contribute the 2.5% to the CS grade as well as your service learning project, 5% to the final CS grade. So your CS grade is made up of your activities grade, your Harvey Hard Sounds exams grade, your AIST exams, and your EpiBioStats grade, as well as your service learning uh, project grade, if it applies to you. Here is self-explanatory, the DCM policy on punctuality and dress code. As you can see here, it's fully explained. So with the absence policies, the, it's important that you notify your course director and I cannot begin to stress the importance of reaching out if you know that you're not going to be present or for some reason or you have an, uh, an excused absence. If you fall ill, visit the clinic, get them to send us a clinic note. But it's important that we know so that your excused absence does not incur a point deduction. And you can see some of the examples here, right? If in doubt, email me. Unexcused absences, as you can see here. Mandatory attendance activities. There's no makeup for your exams, as you can see. And no remediation. And as we wrap up this presentation, just a quick word on health and wellness. And you can see that we have recently faced many challenges during and after Hurricane Maria. I encourage those of you who feel the need to seek support or help to reach out and you know, deal with your health and wellness. And in medicine generally, many issues may arise and I'm asking you if you can name some of them. And here are quite a few. I'm sure you're familiar with, with these as you are now in your fourth or fifth semester of medical school. So you can see that there's quite a lot going on here. Read through these. If you identify with any of these, I'm sure that almost all of us will identify with at least one or two of these, if not more. This is very important because when you master this health and wellness, during your time at medical school, this will assist you greatly when you transition to becoming a practicing physician. And as always, there are many resources available at Ross University here on campus. And I'm asking you to name them. Here they are, quite a lot. And you simply need to reach out. Seek these uh, resources available and they will assist you on your journey to becoming a physician. Of course, email me if you have any queries, concerns. Questions in life are guaranteed, answers aren't, but we will try to answer them the best we can. And obviously, we are here to help, and we are truly invested in your success, so we welcome you. We look forward to a productive and successful semester ahead, and welcome.